You are listening to the Disney Dream Girls, an unofficial Disney theme parks podcast. And this is show number 440 for Sunday, the 29th of January, 2023. Where dreams begin. Hello and welcome to this week's Disney Dream Girls. My name is Michelle Young and together with my jolly good chum, Jane Phipps, we are your guides to the place where dreams begin. Hello there, Janey. Hello there, Michelle. It's the end of the month. It is. One month down. Can I just say, we have very alert hmm. listeners. Okay. Because Vicky Marie sent me a message. Have you fallen out with Jane? And I said, no. <laughs> well, you didn't call her your jolly good chum on last week's show. <laughs> oh, did you not? No. And I didn't realise I didn't. I thought, oh, I'll just shake it up a bit and word it different. <laughs> well, you, you didn't offend me because I didn't notice. Exactly. We are still good friends and Jane is still trying to bribe me to do some sewing. Just advice. I don't necessarily need the sewing. You know, I just might need a bit of instruction. Please. Mm. Pretty please. Okay, well, we'll see. (laughs) But for now, we have got a podcast to record. And last week's show was tinged with sadness because after we recorded later on, we found out about our lovely friend Karen Henderson who had passed away. Mm. And then... Literally at the weekend, I also had received some other sad news. We have a fabulous listener over in Disneyland area in California called John. Many people refer to him as either Big John or Loud John. (laughs) He is an amazing larger than life character who has got a very soft spot in my heart because I absolutely adore him. Unfortunately, his lovely wife, Mary, passed away again after a short illness So our condolences to you, John, Mm. and all her friends and family as a former cast member who made the magic as well over at Disneyland. Mm, So sad. It is. It's um, not not nice when you hear of all these people that are passing away and you're thinking, by heck, that's not really when they're uh, meant to go. No, that's that's the sad thing, isn't it, taken before before their time. Yeah. Mm. It's not so bad when you're hearing, oh, they're in the 90s and they're in the... 80s and things and you sort of think yeah okay yeah but 40s Mm. 50s 60s even there's a lot of living still to be done absolutely and that's what we're gonna do isn't it michelle till the last breath Mm -hmm. so we have a podcaster rooney for this week don't we jane i hope so well i really hope so (laughs) because uh that was my plan and i've got some history oh enlighten me so i've only got two pieces okay 29th of january 1959 disney's animated feature film sleeping beauty premiered at the wiltshire theater in los angeles wow i highly recommend if you love finding the origins of stories you check out disney story origins podcast because our lovely friend paul over there paul hale does an amazing job and he has got some fantastic tales to tell particularly i remember one in particular about cinderella and uh, how brutal the original fairy tale was Yeah, we kind of forget a lot of these fairy tales that are set in folklore aren't necessarily the most child-friendly, are they? Nope. And this one, Sleeping Beauty, was based on this fairy tale called La Belle au Bois Dormant. Basically, The Pretty One Who Is Sleeping by Mm. Charles Perrault. And it has an amazing um, colour palette and it's quite angular. And I loved it. And... Sleeping Beauty was also the first animated feature to be photographed in the Technorama widescreen process, Mm. opposed to Cinemascope, and it was the last Disney feature to use hand-inked animation cells. Oh, wow. You'd think that would be much later than 59, wouldn't you, really? Yeah. Yeah. So, moving on. Mm -hmm. I had to get some Snow White in. (laughs) And on this day in 1987, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs parade onto the floor at the New York Stock Exchange in celebration of Disney's highest ever first quarter revenues. Yeah, they could do with a bit of that at the moment, couldn't they, really? (laughs) Yeah, 
<laughs> Tell you what, Disney, organise me and Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs to go and ring that bell for you. And I tell you what, all good luck will come back to Disney. Definitely. Providing Definitely. you start doing what we want, get rid of the reservations, get your prices sorted, get your housekeeping back, sort your cast members' payout. You know, little things like that. Yeah, and we're, and we're not, you know, we're not whiz, whiz kids, are we, when it comes to finance, Michelle, but we've got a few ideas. we get one the straight and narrow again. And talking of ideas, if anyone would like to buy a beautiful plastic bottle full of Dettol <laughs> and a little bit of bleach and some tap water, which I could claim was somewhere near Splash Mountain, I'll sell you it for the cost of Disney Genie, Genie for 14 days for when I go to Florida. That's ridiculous, isn't it? No takers? No, oh, I'm, I'm all right, Michelle. I think I'll pass on that one if you if you don't mind. I literally saw water being sold for over a couple of hundred dollars. Uh, uh, yes, I am lost for words. It, uh, it boggles my brain. It makes me think, how did that final log manage to move around <laughs> on that track, <laughs> that system, with yes. all this little water? That's very true, yeah. They were draining it as it as it was going on its last final legs. Yeah. So, Jenny. Yes, on Michelle. On today's day, we of recording today, we saw the menu being released for Roundup Rodeo Barbecue. Let's just yeah. check the initials. R R B B Q. Yeah, it's all, it's all yeah, a bit of alliteration going on in all sorts, isn't there? There. But there isn't any Rudy Doody influence there either. No. Not as no. yet. I'm sure no. they'll think of something. <laughs> no doubt. And the platter of food looks pretty good. I must admit, when I saw this uh, announcement had come out and I had a quick look at the photos, I wasn't expecting an awful lot. I don't know why. I think it's because it's been so long in the, mm. you know, taking effect. I was like a bit like, oh, whatever. And I saw the food and I thought, oh, this yeah. meat. There's quite a lot of meat and Jane likes meat, so well, Jane's quite intrigued. I got quite excited over the watermelon salad because I thought, oh, you get these three salads. They look yeah. nice and healthy to go with a little bit of meat mm-hmm. or a lot of meat because we've got Dr. Evil smoked ribs, Buttercup's yes. beef brisket, which I thought, poor Buttercup. <laughs> what some... she, what, what's she done to deserve that, I wonder? Well, she's not been a good cow, so they've got a bank <laughs> round backing in the abattoir and the killing her poor thing <laughs> then they say there's a sausage in my boot which is a spiced pork sausage and it's one of those sausages that look like it's been riled it rolled into a catherine wheel all oh, right yeah i got you like a little swirl and there's barbecue chicken and it's been brined for 48 hours rubbed with their secret barbecue spice and smoked to juicy tenderness it mm. doesn't say what type of chicken. Okay. So I don't know whether it's a, a drumstick. I don't know if it's a thigh. But I'm a kind of girl that prefers the breast. Yeah, I must admit, I'm the same as you. I'm looking at the photos. I'm guessing it potentially drum. Yeah, it's either drumstick or thigh, isn't it? But what made me chuckle, and mm. it, this it, this is what makes me chuckle with regards to all plant based food. In just for me, and if you want to live that lifestyle. I've got two children that live that lifestyle, mm. so I am pretty au fait with it. Yeah. But they've produced a offering for those people following this dietary lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Cauliflower. Absolutely fantastic. That looks really nice, actually, yeah. I, you can't beat a good cauliflower. I'd be no. asking for the cauliflower on the other menu. Yeah, definitely. Then they've got an oven-roasted bratwurst, which obviously isn't meat. Yeah, which is weird, because obviously bratwurst does mean sausage in German, doesn't yeah. it? It mm-hmm. does. And then there's a rib chop, which basically looks like a rib chop. And it's this obsession of making plant options look like meat. I just don't, I can't get my head around. No, well, I'm probably a little bit like you, Michelle, as well, because obviously I, I, t- I tend to be more of a carnivore keto background. So I'm kind of drawn to the meat offerings. And I do look at some of these and go, oh, OK. It just feels a bit incongruous to want to eat mm-hmm. something that looks like meat but isn't meat. Yeah, when you've got your food there, there are eight sides and you can choose four. Oh, okay, right, okay. Loaded potato barrels, mm-hmm. pickle spears, Ooh. mac and cheese. Of course. 
Booking barbecue beans. You've got to have baked beans, haven't you? You've got to be so careful ordering that. <laughs> then there's cow pork corn on the cob. And possibly that one as well. Mean old potato salad. Mm-hmm. Veggie slaw. Yeah. And campfire roasted veggies. Oh, they sound nice. They do, actually. I, I think I'd be quite happy with the selection of sides there. And then we have desserts. Yeah. With the little forky cakes. You can have a selection for the table of cupcake a la forky. Mm-hmm. Lemon and blueberry cheesecake. Nice. Billy's chocolate silk pie. Goat mm-hmm. apple pie. Okay, why is it called goat? I'm imagining there might be some goat's cheese in there. Oh, possibly, yes, that's true. And there's Gruff's peach strawberry pie. Oh, that sounds nice. I don't understand why they've not called it Lotso. Because it's strawberry. Uh, Because it's strawberry, yeah, maybe. But Mm, maybe because he turned baddie. Yeah, it wasn't actually one of Andy's toys, was it? So Yeah. So you've got five desserts there, so I don't know whether you just get a sample of them all in these little glass dishes um, or whether you have to choose a couple. Mm. Because it does say choose from a selection. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, these this is a, they've only just announced this menu, haven't they? So we don't know any prices or anything as yet. So it'll be interesting to see how it's actually going to formulate how the how it's going to be um, served, shall we say? Yeah. But we'll pop some pictures over on the blog DisneyDreamGirls.com, and you can have a look at all the food offerings. Obviously, there's the opportunity to upscale your menu choice and buy for some alcoholic beverages or non-alcoholic. Mm. Um, but yeah, price point, Jane. Shall we have a bit of a guess? Yeah. Well, mm. it depends how they're going to do it, isn't it? It's going to be fixed price. Do you think? Yeah. Yeah. So do you think they're going to deviate between lunch and dinner or are they just going to have one set set price? I think it's just going to be one set price. This is what you can order. No difference between the two. And looking at the portion inch there, I'm not seeing any change from $50 at all. Well, I was going to, I was going to use the, the usual $49.99, that sort of area. Mm. I think we could be talking. Yeah. $45 maybe, if they're being generous. True. Then again, it's a brand new restaurant, so who knows, the, all, with all the pricing, etc., that's been going on at the moment, I think it's getting more and more difficult to uh, guesstimate where these things are going to land. So it it may land higher, I don't know. Yeah, well, we'll find out soon. The restaurant will be open shortly. I think in my travel party in April, there is a desire to eat there. I will add myself on the reservation and I'll wait to see what the reviews and the prices sound like. Mm. So, something else for you, though, to have a try of, Michelle, when you're there. A couple of things that are opening up, so that's quite nice for you, isn't it? It is. I believe we've got a listener's question, Jane. We have, over on our podcast family page on that old Facebook. So Tracy Farley, our very good friend, our Welsh friend Tracy, uh, she's going out to Disney World in September. She's taking her mum with her, and her mum is going to be celebrating her 80th birthday while they're out there. So she wants somewhere to take her mum for a meal to celebrate the birthday. She said it could be a park, it could be in the resort, it could be Disney Springs, but mum isn't a big fan of heavy meals. So Tracy suggests it might be a case of having some appetisers and sides, and she'd ask for some ideas and some favourite items that people could um, possibly suggest for her. Ooh, so what did we come up with? Well, we've got a little bit of a selection. Um, your very good self, you ch- you chimed in um, and mentioned uh, a visit to a lounge and getting some small plates might be the order of the day. Yeah. You pr- you pointed towards Spice Road Table with possibly fireworks. I'm liking the idea of fireworks birthday. That's kind of like a, a nice thing to do. And it's not like you're having to pay for a dessert party or anything ridiculous like that. Yeah, and I liked your idea of Guys of Grill over at Wilderness Lodge because obviously they get the firework, firework music piped in. You'd also get to see potentially the electrical water pageant, which is one of my mm. all-time faves, so that might tip it over for me. Uh, good friend Marla, she suggested the Dahlia Lounge at Coronado Springs. Um, she has, you can see the fireworks from Epcot from up there, so that's something to uh, think about. Mm-hmm. Again, another one with fireworks, recognising that we're making we're having a celebration, so that's a good idea. 
Another suggestion was Chef R. Smith's Homecoming. Now, I know you rate this one, Michelle. Yeah. Um, so, throwing around some ideas like the deviled eggs, fried green tomatoes, shrimp cocktail, the chicken biscuits, homecoming cake. Got to have cake. It was your birthday, haven't you? You know. Uh, wine bar George was mentioned. The meatball charcuterie board. That sounds good. Mm. Mac and cheese bites. Um so lots of nice suggestions over there. Lots of small plates available. I must admit, I think Tracy did come back and say that some some of those were already on her peripheral. She was already eyeing a few of those actually up. Uh, Homecoming got a mention. Polite Pig got a mention. Um, and then going outside of Disney, a uh, friend Lucy Burge has mentioned Kappa at the Four Seasons, saying they do a fab selection of tapas-style dishes, which would fit in with the small plate idea. And you can see fireworks from Magic Kingdom and Epcot from their terrace. So nice to see everybody's thought about this as a celebration. You know, we don't want just food. We want the atmosphere as well. And, uh, you know, if we can get those fireworks in, in then that's um, another bang for your book. Pardon the pun. So lots of different suggestions out there. I'm guessing, Michelle, you're kind of going towards the, uh, the small plates like at uh, Geyser Grill and places like that. Yeah, another one I didn't include, and I thought, oh, why didn't I mention that? Mm. Is to go to the Tambu Lounge because you can get the smaller plates of everything that's available at Ohana, but you can uh, order it in the lounge, and you can always go and sit outside and enjoy it. You can tie it in perhaps with a visit to Trader Sam's. Nice idea, yeah. And again, you will be able to see fireworks and what else might be happening on the lagoon yeah that's very true so i do like this idea of, of going for something later on in the day and incorporating the eating with some uh entertainment at the same time and all of those particularly the magic kingdom resort hotels you know you're going to get a chance to see either the electrical water pageant and or fireworks as well mm. So, yeah, lots of great ideas. Tracy, mm. let us know nearer to the time what you decide on. Yeah, and then we want to know what Mum thinks to the resort. <gasps> so exciting. It's mm. always amazing having these big trips planned. Yeah, well, part of the parcel of going to, to Disney, isn't it, or on a cruise or whatever it is that you're doing, it, it's this planning process and trying to find out the information and getting those plans in order and then hopefully seeing the fruition when you actually get there and, and hopefully that all the planning comes to um, to bear and you have a great time doing it. Absolutely. Well, it's a bit of a food-heavy episode this week, Jane. <laughs> we don't like our food, do we? We do like our food, Jane. <laughs> and it's not that we're just focusing and thinking about Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is opening up very soon in Disneyland and Tron is opening up at the Magic Kingdom. It, there's loads happening at the moment, which is lovely. It's so nice to... To, to switch on the old YouTubes or to, to load up Facebook and see little posts of, you know, different bits and bobs happening for a change. Yeah. So we thought we'd do what all our favourite vloggers have done. <laughs> we will talk about farts. <laughs> oh, that acronym, really. So we're going to have $30. Mm. Slightly smaller budget than everybody who went and ate at every single booth. True. And we are going to see what tickles our fancy and I set myself an additional challenge of being a Yorkshire woman and being a little bit tight-fisted at the moment because all my pennies are going into my travel. Mm. How many items I can buy from the festival for $30? Uh, I didn't go down that route. I just picked things that I like the sound of. You will be amazed how far I made my $30 go, <laughs> Jane. I think you'll be amazed at how far I didn't make my $30 go. Well, I did I did sort of think for half a moment, do you think I could just say I spent $25 on the Figment popcorn bucket? Well, you could. I could. I haven't, but you could. I could do that. If I was at the festival, I would be wanting to buy the maximum purchasable amount of two so I could bring you one home. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Love you. And see, we are, see, we are best buds, really. Yeah, so we still talk to each other, <laughs> Vicky. We honest do. Um, Jane, I have a sneaky feeling that you might have less food than me. So do you want to go through how you spent your $30? Because I've got a very long list. Mine's not very long. 
to be fair at all. Okay, right. Um, we're going to start off. She says if she can find where she was going to start from now. I went all over the place when I was trying to figure out where I was going to go. So as much as I would like to go down my list in alphabetical order, it's not going to work like that. So we're going to start off at El Artista Hambriento. Okay. Which apparently is the hungry artist. Why well, I didn't just say the hungry artist in the first place and save myself the, tr- the uh, pronunciation, I don't know. So at the hungry artist, there is a carne asada, which is a chipotle marinated beef sirloin Ooh. with sweet potato puree and crispy fried onions. So you can see it's ticking my boxes, can't you? Yeah. Um, it is $10, though. Ouchie. Yeah. You know, when I said that, I screwed my face up, and I'm thinking, why am I doing that? Because Michelle can't see me doing that. No, I can't. No. So, yeah, so $10, whew, it's gone already. So you can see where this is going, can't you? Mm. We're now going to go to Japan, and there is a little little booth there called Gashiki. I'm going to... I'm, why am I picking things that's really awkward to pronounce? I'm not doing myself any favours at all, am I? And I'm going to go for a sweet from here. And this is called, again, I'm going to pr- mess this up, Ichaga Ichigo Daifuku. Yeah. It's a mixed berry mochi with sweet azuki bean paste and mascarpone. Now, the reason I've picked this is because my Ethan loves anything to do with Japan. And he very occasionally gets um, these gift boxes, you know, that you can sign up for. And oh, they, yeah. they have loads of unusual things in. And we've been, we've had a few over the last couple of three months. And he always lets me and, me and his dad have a try. Um, and one of the things you often get is mochi. Um, now, some of them can be a bit of a challenge taste-wise. But I'm hoping, because it is mixed berry, it might be quite a nice, sweet vibe. And it's got that sweet bean paste in it as well. And I'm hoping that the mascarpone, which is obviously is not a Japanese item, but I'm hoping that combination will make this quite um, an interesting combination of flavours. So I'm very intrigued by that. But it is $6.75. Ooh. Which is a bit high for a, a, a sweet treat. But I'm, so I'm going for the more, you know interesting the unusual type of thing now i'm saying staying on the sweet thing which is not like me i know and we're gonna go to pastoral palette mm. and they've got and this is just filling with 1980s vibes a black forest cake <laughs> Ka-ching. yeah chocolate mousse with morello cherries and chantilly cream I just thought, oh, that's bringing back so many memories. That was a classy thing to have, wasn't it, in the late 70s into the 80s? A black forest cake. And it's 4 75 so that's not that bad. It's True. kind of better, isn't it? It is. You know. And then I'm thinking, well, what do I do now? And I'm kind of struggling a little bit. And I'm trying to think of things that, you know, kind of really appeal to me, sort of, you know, that uh, are my type of foods. And then chocolate caught my eye. Over at Deco Delights. Yeah. And I know this is that we've had this. It's not this one that's been there before on, on previous, and I'm sure that I've picked this out in previous years. And it's, it's the decadent Varona chocolate with dark chocolate mousse, chocolate brownie, and cassis mousse. Again, it's it's that chocolate and sharpness combination that does it for me, I think. $5. Yeah. Not too bad, I suppose, price wise. And then I'm going to blow it. Oh, Lord. Don't be like that. Go on. How much did you blow on your last item? $15. Oh. Yeah. Have you got enough money to spend $15? No, I'm, I've gone slightly over, but you like me, so that's fine. <sighs> Go on. <laughs> it's a frozen French martini. <laughs> oh, how did I guess? <laughs> well, Grey Goose vodka, Chambord liqueur, pineapple orange and grape with lemon and lime foam. And it's frozen. I just thought it it would wash everything down quite nicely. (laughs) Yeah, true. And I did go slightly over, so I do apologise. But, you know, I'm just being decadent. You might just have to give me half of that cake from Deco Delights to make it equal then. Oh, okay, I'll do that then. So, I've got my list. Are we ready? Oh, here we go. Oh, crikey, go on. I think I've excelled myself. And every (laughs) single thing I have chosen is 
delightful. So my first place is going to be the artist's table and I'm going to have their hummingbird cake which is served with banana sorbet. Mm -hmm. Got all the good stuff in it, $4.75. Okay. Then I'm going to have my decadent Valhorna chocolate, uh -huh. chocolate mousse, chocolate brownie, $5.00. Mm -hmm. So I think I'm doing okay. Then yeah. I'm going to go to the deconstructed dish and I'm going to have the deconstructed key lime pie because basically um, it's curiosity that's driving me there. Oh, okay, right. So, you know, I'm doing all right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then I've sort of got a bit of a gap before I find anything at all that interested me because there's quite a lot of places with some really expensive things. Mm. And if the menu would have been a bit better, I really would have gone to the Art of the Cuisine Francais and had the Crème de la Brie and Petit Pain. But it was $9.75, so I just said, no, not happening, not having yeah. it. I must admit, I did see that as well, but I'd already it $10 by then, so I was a bit, I was yeah. a bit careful after that, yeah. And I ruled out anything to do with Italy because I know it's expensive, so I didn't bother there. Okay. So I went to Modern. Yeah. And I had the compressed watermelon tacati with pickled watermelon rind, mm. yuzu pearls, watermelon foam, and wasabi. Mm. $4.75. And this looks a really generous portion. Mm hmm So I thought, no, nah, I'm having that. Okay. Then I'm going to the pastoral palette and okay. I am having the Black Forest gig, which you mentioned. Mm. Got to have that. And then the last one, I can't believe this is my sixth item for $30, mm. is the almond frangipan cake layered with raspberry jam and Belgian chocolate. Classic. So I believe if my maths is right, and I did add it up in my head, this lot came to $30.50 for six, count them, six items. That's not bad going, is it? So it just shows what you can do if you look at what you, what the prices are before you decide on what you want to eat, unlike what Jane did. Yeah. I, I was conscious of, right, what's the price? What can I get the best of? And I have watched a lot of vlogs mm. and I have spoken to a lot of people who've been there and said, oh my word, these are amazing. And we did have a member of the podcast family share some pictures on the page the other day and they'd gone with that amazing looking bread bowl stuffed with that creamy brie, mm. but also the s'mores um, cocktail with the oh, marshmallows. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that looked really good, but it was just so expensive. The alcohol is so full, so expensive. I just, it is, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, but thank you very much to Mindy Wheatley Usare for your pictures. And, oh my word, your screen picture made me <laughs> laugh out loud. It was so amazing and realistic. It literally looked like you were there. It did. It was really cool, that. Yeah, loved it. Absolutely loved it. So thank you so, so much for sharing. We love it when you guys share. So Absolutely. I've got some uh, news oh, before okay. we end the show. Right. Keep an eye on our upcoming podcast. Next week, we have got an amazing interview with Tom Amin. And yeah. he is sharing some of his music and his inspirations from his latest album, which is released on the 7th of February. So our show will be available for Patreon supporters well in advance of that. If you're not a Patreon supporter, it will be out on the 5th. So you get to hear the music in advance of its release on the 7th. Please listen in. I recorded it the other night. And you know one of those chats that you have with somebody that you haven't seen for a while but it's just like you picked it up and you went into your mm, vibe that's yeah. what it was like i've not seen tom for years because of covid yeah. and it was just such a fun chat amazing oh, conversation so be prepared for some musical delights <laughs> and patreons you be ready because there's going to be a super surprise in your patreon box for an exclusive just for you Sneaky Listen, mm. all 11 tracks. Nice. So that's what we want to tell you. It's patreon.com forward slash Disney Dream Girls for Patreon. 
Twitter and Instagram at Diz Dream Girls and the blog to have a look at all of those mouth-watering pictures from Woody's Roundup Rodeo is DisneyDreamGirls.com. I've got a busy weekend, so I'm going to end the show there because I'm off to go and do some first aid training. Woohoo! Whoop, whoop. So, guys, we will be back next week. Have fun. Enjoy yourself. Keep safe. Love to you all. But until then, it's a goodbye from me. And goodbye from me.